Here is the story of Peter and the Wolf by Sergei Prokofiev, performed by the Wessex Youth Orchestra with me, Chris Jarvis. Now, each of the characters in the story is represented by a different instrument in the orchestra. The bird by the flute. The duck by the oboe. The cat by the clarinet. The grandfather by the bassoon. The wolf by the French horns. by the strings. The rifle shots by the timpani and the big drum. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. On a branch of a big tree sat a small, friendly bird. All is quiet, all is quiet, chirped the bird cheerfully. Just then, Grandfather's rather daft duck came out of the garden and headed for the deep pond in the meadow. Oh, fabulous! Someone's left the gate open! Now I can go out and have a swim!
Seeing the duck waddling along like a fat lady carrying heavy shopping, the little bird laughed and flew down to tease her. What kind of bird are you if you can't fly? he said. What kind of bird are you if you can't swim? <laughs> replied the duck as she dived into the pond with a splash. They carried on arguing, the duck swimming in the pond and the little bird hopping along the bank. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. A cat was crawling through the grass. The cat thought, Oh, look, that bird is so busy arguing with just one pounce. I'll grab him with my claws. Stealthily, she crept towards him on her velvet paws. What a treat, and so much better than whiskers. Meow! Look out, shouted Peter, and the bird immediately flew up into the tree. While the duck quacked angrily at the cat. from the safety of the middle of the pond. You'll not get me! The cat walked around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Good heavens! What's going on out here? roared Peter's grandfather coming out of the house. He was angry because Peter had gone into the meadow and left the gate open. What would you do if a wolf came out of the forest? Eh? Eh? Whatever, thought Peter. Boys like him aren't afraid of wolves. Far too dangerous out here. Now get yourself inside, please, Peter. Grandfather locked the gate and led Peter back indoors, forgetting all about the poor duck.
sooner had they gone than a big grey wolf came out of the forest. Oh, hello. You know, everybody asks me, what's the time, Mr Wolf? And do you know what I say? I say it's dinner time! <laughs> Climbed up into the tree in a flash. You'll not get me, you big hairy brute. <laughs> the duck, meanwhile, quacked and stupidly jumped out of the pond. Help! Help! Don't let the wolf get me! I've got so much to live for! But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf! He was getting nearer! Nearer! Catching up with her! And then he got her! And with one huge gulp, swallowed her. Mmm, crispy duck. Not a bad starter, but what about the main course? The two remaining animals sat in the tree, the cat on one branch the bird on another. Not too close to the cat. And the wolf walked round and round the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. Oh, what lovely specials we have on the menu today. A juicy moggy. How dare you? I'm a pedigree Persian. Whatever. And a tasty bird. I'll gobble you up in one gulp. Well, after all, you are a swallow. <laughs> Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, watching everything that was going on. Don't you pick on them, he shouted. Oh, don't worry, I won't pick on them, I'll wolf them down! <laughs> The wolf was too busy laughing to notice Peter climbing the high stone garden wall. 
One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter crawled along, carrying some strong rope. Peter said to the bird, Fly down and circle over the wolf. Just take care he doesn't catch you. The bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings. The wolf snapped angrily at him. Oi, cut that out! the wolf. You can't catch me, you big mangy mass of fur. And how the wolf wanted to catch him. I'll get ya, I'll get ya. But the bird was clever and the wolf couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter made the rope into a lasso and carefully letting it down. He caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. Hey, what's going on? Stop it, that tickles. Ow, no! The trapped wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Help! Help! I want my mummy! Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. But the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter. Oh, what a rotten trick! came out of the woods. Following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. Look over there, Captain! It's the big hairy wolf! Let's shoot it! I could do with a new coat!
Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot! Birdie and I have already caught the wolf. Help us take him to the zoo! And now... Imagine the triumphant procession. Peter at the head. Champion! After him, the hunters leading the wolf. Winding up the procession, Grandfather and the cat. Peter's my hero, she said. Of course he's a hero. He's my grandson. But he shouldn't have taken risks at his age. I dread to think what might have happened if Peter hadn't caught the wolf. <laughs> Blue birdie chirping merrily. Aren't we brave? Look what Peter and I have caught! And if you listen very carefully, you can hear the duck quacking inside the wharf. Because the wharf, in his hurry, had swallowed her alive. <laughs> 